Good morning, everyone. How are you doing this morning? Did you have a good night's sleep? Well, I hope you did. The Lord wants you to sleep well. Hope you feel well rested this morning. Hope that you are ready for the world. Or should I say, I hope the world is ready for you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Real Talk Inspiration. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But we are not your typical Baptist church. We are not your traditional Baptist church, and I am not your typical pastor. We are all inclusive. We welcome and affirm you as you identify yourself. LGBTQ plus community, come on in this place. You are loved here. You are accepted, not rejected. We love you and we want you to feel at home. We don't care where you're from, what your last name is. We don't care what neighborhood you live in or, or any of that pettiness. We just want you to come and worship the Lord with us. Listen, I have a word for you this morning. This is the first Black History uh, Thursday in uh, First Liberty. We are going to talk about our Black History. Amen? Now, we know that every day is Black History. We know that when we talk about Black History, it's American History. Ooh, can I get an amen, somebody? When I talk about black history, I'm talking about American history. Amen? And so every day is black history. Every month is black history month. So we're going to take February and run with it, okay? We're going to do what we will with it. But we want you to know that we are celebrating it here um, at First Liberty as we do all the time. And so God bless you. Thank you for being up early with me this morning. My Facebook family, my YouTube family, those who come over from my other uh, platforms, Twitter, social uh, uh, media, Instagram, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. We are going to pray first, and then we are going to go on into the lesson. Now, the lesson is a very simple one this morning. Uh, it's a question that God put on my heart, and, and it's a question that God wanted to answer this morning. And so I want to share God's answer with you. Amen. So let's pray. And while I'm praying, I want you to be praying, beloved. While I'm praying, don't you know that God is powerful enough to hear your prayers and mine at the same time? Yes, you be praying about whatever your individual concern is. And I'm going to be praying. And, and God is going to hear our prayers. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for a brand new month, uh, four days in now, and we recognize that it is a month that has been set aside to celebrate black history. Mm. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to do so. We ask that you would continue to bless us as a black people, bless us because we have been rejected, we have been oppressed, we have been made to feel less than, we have been made to feel unworthy. And so, Lord, uh, we need a special blessing. We need, we need to, to feel that we are here because you want us here. We are in America because you want us in America. 
We are in this earth because you want us in this earth. We are carefully and wonderfully made and carefully placed where you want us to be. And no one can stop it and no one can change that. And so, Lord, when people fight against us, they're fighting against you. And so, Lord, we ask that you would continue to fight our battles for us. We know that the victory is won. And all we have to do is keep our hands in your hands, and all will be well. We love you this morning, Lord. And whatever the problem may be this morning, uh, there are those who have their own individual issues. I have mine. Uh, uh, we, you know, we all have our different uh, balance, battle, battles and challenges. But Lord, we know that you are able. We know that you are able to give comfort and strength to those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We know that you are able to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We know, Lord, that you're able to put food on, on the tables of those who are struggling right now. There are those in the hospitals, Lord, who are fighting for their lives, Lord, who are struggling to take another breath. And oh, my God, there's a, another a variant of, of this COVID, a uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, and, and, Lord, we, 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 we ask that you would protect us from it. We ask that you would give us wisdom and help us to, to be careful and to use wisdom in everything we do. To be safe and to keep others safe. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, uh, give us the wisdom to, to go out and be among people that, that, that if we have to, to wear our mask and to keep our distances and and Lord, we just thank you for that wisdom. And so, Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. You've been so good to us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And so, Lord, we ask that you would continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be the bright lights in this dark world. You told us in your word that we are the light of the world. And yes, that includes your black people. We are the light of the world. We have been made to think that we are darkness and that darkness is a bad thing. We have been made to believe that we are less than human. We have been uh, made to think that we ought to fight against one another. But no, none of that is true. We are the apple of your eyes, just like anyone else. You love us just as much as anyone else. We, we, we know that you died for us just like you died for anyone else. We thank you, Lord. We know that in creation you had us on your mind. Oh, and we thank you, Lord. We give you glory this morning. And as we approach your word, Lord, let us approach it carefully. Let us approach it with open hearts and open minds to be receptive to what it is you have to say to us this morning. And Lord, we will be careful to give you all the glory. Let us walk away from this lesson knowing that we have heard from you. We have indeed heard from the mouth of God. We thank you now, Lord. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. God bless you, beloved. Whatever your problem may be this morning, God hears your heart. If it was spoken, if it was mentioned in prayer, if it was not mentioned in prayer, God knows what's on your heart. God knows what's on your mind. God knows what's troubling you, beloved. And so even when we can't get our words together, even when we can't get our words out, God knows what you're feeling. God knows what you are experiencing. And so, beloved, um, know that God is not only a prayer hearing God. God is a prayer answering God. 
Now, let us go on into the lesson this morning. It's a very simple lesson. I have heard people ask the question, is Christianity for black people? Is the Bible for black people? Do we need to read the Bible? Is 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 Christianity for black people, or is there some other faith or some other uh, religious belief that the black ethnic group should embrace? Should the black race look elsewhere for God's presence in our lives? Well, beloved, during the month of February, I'll be teaching and preaching the black presence in the Bible. The title of this lesson is Black in Christ. Woo, that sounds good to me. That has a ring to it, black in Christ. And so listen, beloved, I want you to stay with me all this month, every Thursday uh, morning at 7 o'clock a.m. for Real Talk Inspiration, and every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time for the Sunday Sermon. Black in Christ. Okay, I'm going to make it a series. How about that? For the month of February. Now listen here. I'm going to give you a little bit of a backdrop of what we're talking about this morning. Acts, the second chapter. And, and the little background that I want to share with you begins at verse 5. This was after Jesus had ascended back to heaven. And his apostles were all together. Uh, and they were in this room uh, uh, praying. And they were in Jerusalem. Jesus told them, go to Jerusalem and wait. And don't you leave until you have received the Holy Spirit. Mm. Come on, I'm going somewhere. And in this place, there were, uh, in Jerusalem, with the disciples, or with the apostles, God-fearing uh, Jews from every nation. Keep that in mind. Every nation. I've emphasized every. Every nation under heaven. That means that there was no nation that was not there. There was no nation at that time in this earth that was not there. And, and beloved, what happened was a strange thing. While they were together, they were praying and they were in fellowship with one another, there was a great sound of wind rushing through the room and then winds blew and, 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 and everybody looked around at each other wondering in fear what is going on. And, and beloved, this sound, uh, uh, it, was, it was bewilderment. Uh, after this happened, uh, uh, the disciples uh, 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 started to speak. And when the crowd, the Jews from all the nation, uh, every nation came uh, around, uh, they, were, they, they, they were in bewilderment. They came together, and, 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 and there were some who were not Jews who, who, who gathered around to see what was going on. And they heard uh, uh, from the apostles uh, them speaking, God's blessings and miracles and God's glory in their own language. Now keep in mind, they were from different nations all over the world as it was at that time. And they were utterly amazed, the scripture says. And they asked, aren't these all speaking Gal Gal uh, Galatians? Uh, excuse me, Galileans? Aren't these people Galileans, the apostles, the disciples? Aren't these all Galileans? You see? Uh, 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 they, they're all speaking, but, but they're Galileans. How can they be speaking in our language? Now, some people say that they were hearing, that the miracle was in the hearing of the nation. Well, I, I, I'm not understanding it that way. I'm, I'm seeing that, that, that when the apostles spoke, all of these other nations heard the apostles speaking these different languages. The scriptures calls it tongues. And every nation heard what they were saying, the miracles of God, the glory of God, the blessings of God in their own language. It says that the part the 
Chaldeans were there, the Medes and the Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. Stay with me. Come on, I'm going somewhere. Phrygia and Pamphylia. And check this out. Egypt. Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene. Uh, where is Egypt? Do I have to remind you where Egypt is? Where is Libya? Do I have to remind you where Libya is? Cyrene? Don't you know where Cyrene is? These are nations in the continent of Africa and regions in the continent of Africa. And there were others there, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Okay, Cretans and Arabs. And they said, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. People from all of these different nations and regions of the world were hearing the wonders of the Lord spoken by the apostles in their own tongues, their own languages. They were amazed and perplexed. And they asked one another, what does this mean? Woo! I'm glad you asked, beloved, because people want to know today, is Christianity for black people? Mm. Or is Christianity for us? Are we even mentioned in the scriptures? You know, where are we taken out? I heard somebody say the other night that the black people were taken out of the NIV version. Uh, let me uh, 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 just uh, help you a little bit there. The NIV version of the Bible, don't you know, along with the American Standard Version, uh, although they are newer, newer versions than the King James Version, they are closer and closest to the original manuscript. They are closest to the original manuscript of Scripture. Mm. Woo. I don't have time to get into that this morning. But, beloved, I read the NIV, and that's one of the main reasons why. And so, beloved, uh, people are saying that they, they took uh, uh, black people out of the Bible, out of the King James Version. No, they didn't. It is a matter of interpretation. And so the NIV, beloved, uh, says down in our text, verse 38, Peter was there. And of course, Peter, or with his big mouth, was always the first to speak about something. And Peter replied, repent. Talking to the nations, all of the people who had gathered around to see what was going on. And Peter said, repent. Now, now what Peter meant here is, have a change of mindset. Have a change of mind in God. Change your thoughts toward God. Look at things God's way. Well, how do you see things from God's perspective? In God's word. You read God's word. Look, when you watch a movie, you, 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 you see characters in the movie and you begin to see uh, uh, what's happening from that character's perspective. When you read a good book, you start to understand what is happening from the author's perspective. When you read the scriptures, you understand the world and your life and everything in it from God's perspective. Woo! And you have to watch people, beloved, because uh, I had some people I was listening to, uh, 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 what was it, Monday night? Oh, and they were messing the scriptures all up, Lord. Oh my God, they were, I wanted to jump in so bad and, and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, uh, say anything at the moment because of the way the, 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 the social uh, uh, platform is set up. Uh, they have to allow you uh, up to speak. And so, and so, uh, beloved, I could, I wanted to say something so bad, uh, but beloved, they were messing it all up. It, it, it's a matter of interpretation. 
And so what Peter was saying is have a change of mindset through the word. The word of God renews your mind. Paul said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, what renews your mind? You can't renew your own mind. Yes, we can make some adjustments in our thoughts and our thinking and the way we, we see certain things, but only God can actually change your perspective and your mindset from your heart, from the inside out, through the Word. And so what Peter was saying, listen here, folks, from all these nations, you have gathered here from Africa and everywhere else, have a change of mindset. See, uh, uh, that's what repent means. Stop seeing it your way and start seeing it God's way. Stop looking at it the way you want to look at it or the way somebody told you to look at it and look at it for yourself from God's perspective. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Good morning, Carolyn, my sister. I've been praying for you now. You hold on to God's unchanging hand and everything going to be all right. God got you. You know that? God bless you, my sister. I'm so glad you are here this morning. And all of you who I cannot see, uh, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Listen. And Peter goes on, he says, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, baptism is nothing more than a symbolic uh, uh, outward uh, action that we take to say to the public, I have come to Christ. I have died, buried in my sins, and risen to a new life. We call it the liquid grave. When people go down, uh, we imagine Christ being uh, crucified, being buried, and then risen to life. And so when we are baptized, we are baptized into his death. We are symbolizing the fact that we have died to self, going down into the water, the liquid grave, and coming up into a new life. It's nothing more than a symbol, and it's nothing more than making a statement to the public and people who are witnessing this, that you have made a decision in your life to accept Christ as your Savior. And so he said, be baptized, hallelujah, every one of you. Every one of you includes the nation of, uh, uh, of Libya, the region of Cyrene, the nation over there in Africa, Egypt, the nation of Egypt, See, the continent of Africa. Say, all of you, everyone, didn't leave nobody out. Didn't leave the black folks out now. See, some people would have us to believe that God did not include us. That God excludes us. That God leaves us out. Oh, I've got some, some, some information for you this morning, beloved, that God has laid on my heart. And, and the rest of this month, so you stick with me. Oh, yeah. And so uh, Peter goes on and he says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. God. God, our creator. God, Jesus. God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who dwells in us when we receive Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one who dwells in us and with us and upon us. We are never alone. Don't you know, beloved, you are never or alone? You might be laying up in the hospital bed uh, by yourself and can't receive any visitors. Guess what? You are not alone. Guess what? You might be uh, in the house by yourself and, 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 and you think, Oh, you know what? This COVID has got to go. I can't do nothing. I can't go nowhere. Listen, beloved, you are never alone. The Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's talking to you, black folk. He's talking to you, too. You see, 
we, we, we have to remember, we have to get the mindset that God is all inclusive. Jesus died for the world, not just for a few people, not just for white people, not just for straight people, not just for, yeah, I said straight, because he died for the LGBTQ plus community too. Everybody. And, and, and not for the, just for the rich people, but are uh, the billionaires, the trillionaires, but for everyone. Glory to God. And and and, and Peter said, "You re, you repent and be baptized, every one of you, uh, and you will receive the gift. It's a gift. When you receive a gift, you didn't earn it. Somebody just gave it to you." You didn't earn it. You didn't buy it. You didn't have to pay for it. Somebody just gave it to you. Somebody loved you enough just to give it to you because they wanted you to be happy. They wanted to see a smile on your face because they loved you. And, 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 and he said, he said, this is the gift from God, the Holy Spirit. Don't you know whether you black, brown, yellow, green, red, whatever color you are, that, that if you receive Christ, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, God Almighty, lives on the inside of you, lives in your heart. That's how you make it through pandemics and, 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 and trying times and financial hardship and, 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 and relationship problems. That's how you make it. That's how you keep from losing your mind. That's how you keep yourself uh, uh, in, in wisdom and doing the right thing at the right time. Because, you know, you can even do the right thing at the wrong time. But in wisdom, you do the right thing at the right time. There is a time for everything, beloved. Mm. Come on now. And God gives us black folk wisdom as well. Every promise in the Bible is for us. During the month of February, I'm going to go deeper, beloved. I'm going to show you the black folk in the Bible. Woo! I want you to stick with me on Sundays and Thursdays. I want you to stick with me. I'm going to point out some black folk. I'm sure I'm going to miss some of them, but I'm going to point out some. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants you to know because black people today, and, and understandably, beloved, are asking, is Jesus for them? Is Christianity for them? Because after all, Jesus in America has been made out to be a white man with blue eyes and blonde hair. Now, I don't have anything against my white, my Caucasian sisters and brothers in Christ. I do not. I have a problem with them wanting other people to worship them. That's my problem. I'm having a problem with those who think they are better than black and brown people and want the black and brown people to worship their Jesus. Their Jesus said that uh, LGBTQ plus people are going to hell. Their Jesus said that the black and brown people are less than 100% human. Literally, they say that. There are some denominations uh, of, of, of so-called Christians who say that, that black and brown people, black folk in particular, are not 100% human. Today, they say that. Today. On February 4, 2021, today. Black people are not 100% human. I'm not talking about that Jesus. That's not the Jesus in the Bible. They have made up a Jesus uh, that they say is in the Bible that they preach and teach about. And they have created an image in themselves. See, God said, have no other image before me. They have created an image of themselves. They've created an image that looked like them. Oh, my God. But look, beloved, I stopped by to tell you this morning, that ain't the real Jesus. That ain't the real Jesus. Don't nobody look like that who came from that region of the world over in the Middle East and the Far East. Nobody. Nobody was born 
with blonde hair and blue eyes over there. I'm just being real with you this morning. I'm not trying to come against nobody and talk about nobody. I don't hate nobody or none of that. I'm just telling you facts. Nobody's born with blonde hair and blue eyes over there. Okay. And, and so, beloved, uh, uh, the Jesus that, that we have been taught about is not the Jesus in the Bible. You stick with me in February, and I'm going to show you some stuff. I don't got nothing against uh, white, white, my white sisters and brothers at all. I love them just like anybody else, but I got to say what's true. I have to say what's true. That's all I'm doing. And so, uh, the Holy Spirit, ooh, I could do a whole, a whole lesson on the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 alone, beloved, but but I, I, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say that, but the Holy Spirit gives us power. That's what gives us power in this earth. That's, that's, that's where God speaks to us, by, by the Spirit of God. God speaks to us. See, because we are spirits. And we are made in God's image, meaning that because God is a spirit, we are spirits. And God created us as spirits. And then he shaped and formed us from some mud. Uh-huh. And, 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 and shaped the body for us. And then he blew in our nostrils. And behold, man became a living soul, a living spirit, a living soul. A, 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 a spirit who lives in a body and possesses a soul, has a soul. So the Holy Spirit is very important, beloved. If you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, whoo, you got power. Oh, you got power. You just don't know how much power you got. But that's another lesson, you see. But I, I'm going to get to it not, not, not long from now. Uh, 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 this spring, rather, is what I mean. And so, beloved, Peter goes on. I'm not going to hold you this morning, not too long. I'm going to try not to. Verse 39 of our text, that was verse 38. 39, Peter continues. This time, Peter knew what he was talking about. Remember, Peter said, look, I, I'll never leave you, Lord. I'll die for you. I, I, I ain't going to leave you. I'm ready to go with you all the way to the end. Always putting his foot in his mouth. Always standing up being the first to say something. And, and talking about he'll die for Jesus. And, and when they told Jesus after after they were cruci uh, crucified Jesus, and they came to Peter, and the little girl said, oh, you one of them. I saw you. You you around. You, you were with Jesus. You, you one of the disciples. Jesus said, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, Peter, excuse me. Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, little girl. And Jesus had already told him, you're going to deny me three times before the uh, uh, cock crows, crows uh, 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 tonight. Before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh, I'm going to be with you to the end if I got to die. And little girl say, you, you one of them. I saw you with Jesus. I saw you. Peter was scared to death. He said, oh, no, no, what you talking about? That wasn't me. <laughs> but Peter knew what he was talking about this time, beloved. See, this time he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Woo, see the difference the Holy Spirit makes in our lives? Now, here is Peter speaking with truth and power. See, the first time he was just talking out the side of his neck, you see, just talking and trying to sound good and trying to sound churchy. You know, yeah, people go around quoting scriptures trying to sound like they churchy, trying to sound like they, you know, you know, spiritual people and, and all this, you know. Uh, and Peter just said a lot out of his mouth, didn't know what he was talking about. Denied Jesus three times. I don't know what you're talking about. And today in our text, Peter stood up and promised. And he said, listen, this is the promise now. Peter's filled with the Holy Spirit. Now he got some power now. It's going to make a difference. Don't you know, by the time Peter finished talking to these nations, that five, uh, was it 3,000 people?
people join the church that day in one day that was the power coming through Peter by the time Peter got through with that sermon uh, 3,000 people came to Christ 3,000 people that day beloved telling you with the power of God living on the inside of you whoo, you are unstoppable there is no limit to what you can do. And I'm talking to the black and brown folk. Because you are not in excluded. See, Peter said the promise is for you. What promise? The promise that the prophet Joel talked about. Back in Joel, when, when God said through the prophet Joel, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all nations. Men and women and children. He said, I don't exclude nobody. I don't exclude anybody. I'm going to pour out my power on everybody who comes to me. And Peter said, this is the promise. See? For you and your children and for all who are far off meaning the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and those who were not Jews. And beloved, let me drop this right here. Don't you know that we are spiritual Jews? Spiritual Israelites in Christ? Now Jews were, the Judaism, Jews uh, who were in the, the, the religion of Judaism, that's a religion. That's a, that's a faith system, okay? Uh, but but uh, the Israelites, Israelites or the Hebrews, that was their ethnicity. Don't you know that even though we were not born of Abraham, uh, actually, uh, we were, comes all the way from Adam, all the way down. We all come from one, one race, the human race. Anyway, I, I, that's, a, that's another lesson too. But, 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 we are we 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 have come from uh uh Abraham in a spiritual sense. We are spiritual Israelites. Everything that was for the Israelites is for us in a spiritual and natural sense. Now there's some things that was specifically for that time, like crossing the Red Sea. You know, we don't have to cross the Red Sea. You know, I'm talking about little trivial things. But but, but a lot of it, that is for us today. The Bible says in the New Testament that the Israelites are, and what happened with them are examples for us today. Don't make the mistakes that they made and do better than they did. Because we are spiritually, we are Israelites. So, 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 and it's in the scriptures. I can put some Bible behind it. It's in Romans. It's in Romans. I, I forget uh, 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 chapter 14, maybe, or 13, but it's in Romans uh, that tells you we don't have to be actually born uh, of Abraham and one of Abraham's descendants to be an Israelite. We are spiritual Israelites in Christ. Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And one of Jacob's sons is Judah. Whew. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, Jews and non-Jews, Gentiles at the time, who were not in the uh, uh, religion of Judaism, it's for them too. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Many are called, but few are chosen. You know why? Because God calls everybody, but few will answer. And the ones who don't answer are not called because you gotta be, you gotta answer. See? You know, if somebody calls your name and you don't answer, then you they can't instruct you any further. They can't communicate with you any further in telling you what the next step is and what to do next and what your purpose is and what they want you to do and why you're here. 
You know why why you're doing what you're doing? Uh, if you don't answer, if you don't acknowledge, you see, and so many are called. God calls everybody, all nations. You see it right here. God calls all nations, but not all nations answer to God. Not everybody, I put it this way, not everybody in all nations answers. So many are called, but few answer. Many, many are called, but you know, but few answer that call. You see. So so God God doesn't want anybody to be excluded. But it's people who don't answer. That's not God's fault. That's not God's fault. So listen, Peter, uh, let me make a couple of points here. That promise is for all of us, and it leaves no one out. And the promise is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is very important, beloved. This is nothing small. This is the greatest blessing of the new covenant, the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit seals us. It's a guarantee that we have a home with the Lord. It's like a mark on us. You know, it's like, you know, you know how when you go to the fair, the state fair. I would say the club, but you know, I I I think that's a little bit inappropriate for this lesson. So 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 you know how when you go to the state fair and you pay. And they put a little something around your wrist, or they put a stamp on your on your on your uh, uh hand. It says you paid. It says you have a right to be in there, and you have all the privileges thereof. Woo! The Holy Spirit is a stamp, a seal. It's the seal of God stamped on us saying that we are guaranteed, beloved, to be in the presence of God forevermore. It is a step of approval. It is the guarantee that we will be with the Lord forever. That's how important the Holy Spirit is. And beloved, the moment you receive Christ as your Savior and your Lord, you receive the Holy Spirit. This is where it all started in Acts, the second chapter, the day of Pentecost. And, 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 and God poured down through Christ his Holy Spirit or her Holy Spirit or, 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 or Yahweh, the Holy Spirit, poured down the Holy Spirit on all flesh. Didn't leave out black folk, didn't leave out anybody. And beloved, this is a guarantee from that day forward. Anybody who comes to Christ receives the Holy Spirit. This is your guarantee. And so, beloved, it's a, it's a seal. You black and you you receive Christ. You have the Holy Spirit. That's your stamp. That's your seal of approval by God. Beloved, you are deep in the scriptures. Black and brown, all nations, all, everybody. Black, brown, all nations. See, Asian, everybody. You, 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 they, they're in the scriptures. The Lord left no one out. And, and, so, and so the Holy Spirit uh, is proof that we belong to God. And beloved, I just, that's all I want to tell you. That's the first lesson of, of this month of black history. That's what I wanted to share with you. I just kind of wanted to establish a foundation for you to know that you are there. Now, we're going to get more specific as time goes on throughout the month. And we're going to talk about some folk, some black folk uh -huh, in the scriptures. Yeah, and we're going to talk about don't go talk about our presence in the Bible because there's a question floating around. Uh, is Christianity for black people? You see, is Jesus for black people? Well, not the Jesus that people been teaching. 
in the tradition of churches. Not no, not 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 that Jesus. No. But there is a real Jesus. And beloved, oh what a blessing. So I'm telling you, beloved, God does not exclude black people in the scriptures. We in there. We are in there, I'm telling you, from the Old Testament to the New. We are there. You are included. Ooh, and I, ooh, I, 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 I'm not going to say nothing. You just stick with me. You are included in God's blessings and every promise that God ever made. We are included, beloved. Don't you forget. Every promise God made is for you, black and brown people. Every promise God ever made, every blessing that God pours down is for you, black and brown people, just like it's for anyone else. We are not excluded. Is Christianity for black people? Yes, because God is for black people. God includes black people. See, you understand? And don't let nobody tell you. You see, sometimes we, we have bad leaders who don't study the scriptures. And they want to make us think that we are excluded. Black people and LGBTQ plus people. They want to make us feel like we are not in, in, included in God's promises and God's blessings in the scripture. They tell us we got to, we got to, uh, the LGBT uh, community has to change before you can be accepted in God's kingdom. That ain't nothing but a lie from the pits of hell. That's all that is. That ain't in the Bible nowhere. That's why I say it's a matter of interpretation. You have to know how to interpret scripture. People go around lying on God. You are included in every promise, in every blessing, just like the Jews were, just like anybody else today. Black, white, brown, yellow, wherever you come from, whatever nation Christ is for all. And so, beloved, know that God loves you that you are the apple of God's eye. And I'm focusing on black people not to exclude anyone else, beloved. Remember, I'm not, I'm not trying to exclude anybody. I am trying to assure us as black people because we have struggled so much in this nation. We have struggled so much because it's hard to understand how People who are murderers and who hang black people from trees and raped our women and beat our men for no reason and who still today spew out ugly, nasty, hateful rhetoric uh, uh, about killing Democrats and, and, and people uh, who are human beings who God loves. It's hard for us to understand how they can be Christians. Like they say they are. And then we associate them with Jesus. Because they say they're Christians. And see, that's that's become a struggle. And so people are asking now, oh, 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 is Christianity for black people? Well, yes, the answer is yes, beloved, because... That ain't the real Jesus they talking about. Because Christianity is not a religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus. The real Jesus. Not the one they worship. I don't know what God that is. I don't know how. They're they, they messing up scripture. I don't know how they get. Because they justified slavery, you know. They, they, they found a way in the scripture to justify slavery. And God said nothing of the sort. They found a way, even black folk, even black pastors found a way to discriminate against the LGBT community and they based it in the scriptures. They, 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 they said it's in the Bible and that is not true, beloved. I don't know where they get that from. They're lazy and won't study. 
And, and they're saying what they've been told and what they heard down through the years without studying for themselves. But that is not in the Bible. There ain't nothing about loving, uh, affectionate relationship between two consenting same-sex adults. It ain't even in the scriptures. But there are some 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 texts in there that 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 Jesus mentioned and and that were talked about. I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you about it in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and it ain't nothing bad. It ain't nothing bad. It's about acceptance. And so people don't like that when, 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 when people tell the truth, you see. But that's just the truth, beloved. That's just the truth. Because when you go study for yourself, you're going to see it. And if you study it properly, you'll see it. So, 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 so beloved, uh, uh, there is a struggle going on. Because these people, these uh, 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 insurrectionists and haters and murderers and criminals who hate black and brown people call themselves Christians. And so black people are wondering, well, what? Well, that ain't for me. That's the, I, I'm not supposed to, I, I, I'm not a Christian. All right, because I'm not like that. But beloved, that ain't, listen, they're not real Christians. They don't know the Lord. They may have said, yeah, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. But they don't have a relationship with him. They do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. How you can hang somebody from a tree while you burning crosses? See? So, beloved, the real Jesus is for us. The real Jesus includes black and brown people. The real Jesus loves us and accepts us. Not the one they created. Not the image they created. I don't know who they, 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 I mean, you know, well, that's, that's, I'll be too long if I go into that. If they worship as somebody else, it, it ain't God. But, but, but beloved, uh, that is the first lesson of a series that I'm going to continue, uh, this month. I hope it has been a blessing to you, beloved. Uh, it's only the beginning of this series, Black in, 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 uh, uh Christ. Black in Christ. Amen. And so uh, that was part one. <laughs> I hope it blessed your heart, beloved. I hope that um, you you understand that, that you are in the scriptures as black people. And the Bible is often misinterpreted. And that as an LGBTQ plus person or a black person, straight, gay, whatever, you know, you are loved and God does not exclude you. Don't get confused by the people who are hateful and do ungodly things who say they're Christians. Don't worry about them. That, that, that's not in what they're doing. God does not uh, approve of that. So I don't know who they're worshiping. I know, but I'm not getting ready to get into that. But, but, but it's not God. It's not the true and living God. It's not the righteous and holy and true God. And, and that's not the Jesus that's in the scriptures. No. And so you stay with me in the month of February and hope beyond February, but you stay with me. Black in Christ. Amen. In other words, being black and being in Christ. That's the series black in Christ. So beloved, I'm going to go ahead and let you go this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is your time, beloved. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. You have this very moment. Ask the Lord to come into your heart, save you, forgive you for 
uh, all of your sins, the word says, all have sin. Black, white, straight, gay, everybody. All have sin one way or another by doing something that God has told us not to do. And the only commandment we have today, beloved, is to love God and to love one another. The only commandment today is love. And love does no harm. Love harms no one. Do no harm. That's the only commandment we have today. Ooh, that's it. Do no harm in deed or in word. Don't say nothing to harm anybody. Don't do anything to harm anybody in any way. That's the only commandment we have. That's how I know. I don't know who they who they worship it. I mean, well. I keep saying that, but I do know. But I know it's not the true and living God. Because God said you don't you do no harm. Love, real love does no harm. See. So, beloved, we are here to stay in America. And I heard it said last night while I was listening to uh, our beloved. Uh, Bishop Flunder and some wonderful panelists on Beyond the Gatekeepers. You ought to watch it on Wednesday nights at uh, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time on Facebook Live. Um, it's a new America. God said I'm doing a new thing. It's a new America. And this new America is, 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 is becoming more and more melanated black and brown and that's what the demonic fight is about that's what the spiritual warfare is about they don't want to let it go the devil does not want to let it go wants to keep us down gotta go beloved i love you from the bottom of my heart my facebook family my youtube family i love you carolyn i love you the lord has uh uh uh, uh, uh all of of the blessings that that are due you uh, for you, and you are going to receive God's blessings. Amen. All things are in God's hands. Amen. God bless you all. YouTube family, God bless you. Facebook family, God bless you. Instagram, if you came over from Instagram or Twitter, God bless you. I love you from the very bottom of my heart. Come with me Sunday now. Don't miss a don't 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 miss a don't miss a sermon. Don't miss a lesson. Thursday, seven o'clock a.m. and Sundays, eleven o'clock a.m. Right here live. Don't miss it, beloved. God has a word for you, especially to the black and brown people who need to hear some encouragement, who need to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm not excluding or discriminating or trying to leave anybody out. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to leave out Asian people, white people, or Chinese or anybody. I, I'm talking to the black people because we are celebrating black history and because we need some encouragement. Because there are people wondering if God is really for them in the scriptures and, and in Christianity. And so uh, 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 I'm going to show you what God is saying about you, beloved, as black people. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will uh, keep you in my prayers. God bless you. See you next time.